Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India our online NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Sudha Gwell and myself Anjali Pal. We are both from civil engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part environmental chemistry will be covered by me and the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by Professor Sudha Gwell. The objective of this environmental chemistry is shown student will be able to apply basic principles of chemistry. The course will be covered by the following topics acids, bases and salts, chemical equilibria, chemical kinetics, chlorination, nitrogen chemistry and nuclear chemistry. So, in my first lecture I will start with acids, bases and salts. The old concept of acids is that some people told that acid should turn blue litmus red, somebody told it is sour and some people told that it reacts with bases to form salt and water. It burns the skin, it can donate proton, but all these properties were very old and it is not explained by the modern concepts. The first modern concept was given by Arrhenius and he said that the acid is something which gives hydrogen ions in water solution and the base is something which gives hydroxide compound and the neutralization process is nothing but the union of H plus and OH minus to form the water. This is also called water and concept and it was first given by Arrhenius in his dissertation PhD dissertation and he said he explained it as electrolytic dissociation theory in 1887. But this theory has several limitations. Say for example, we all know now that proton H plus cannot stay as such because of its high hydration energy. It immediately combines with the water molecule to form H3O plus which is oxonium ion. It is also called hydroxonium ion and also it can be called as hydronium ion. Second thing is that in this concept it is mentioned that acid is a proton donor in aqueous solution that means water medium and base is something which gives the hydroxide ion in water. But an acid should be defined not in terms of any medium, but it should be told by itself. Say for example, in gaseous phase or in other solvents what happens for acids and what happens for bases. It also could not explain the properties of ammonium ion which is an which shows an acidic property and acetate ion is basic showing basic property. 
So, this has some limitations, but at that time it was quite sufficient and in aqueous medium it is quite good to explain the acidic and basic properties. It is very important to know the iron product which is the iron product of water. We all know that water dissociates into H plus and OH minus. Of course, H plus cannot stay as such it immediately combines with water to form hydroxonium ions. So, in terms of the formation of hydroxonium ions we can we can we can tell that this is uh, this is the actual equation for water dissociation. Water dissociates varies slightly and the ion product of water which is called as K w which is nothing but the equilibrium constant of this uh, equation. It is nothing but H plus ion concentration into OH minus ion concentration by water concentration and because this is unity. So, we can tell it is nothing but H plus ion concentration into OH minus ion concentration and this is called as the ionic product of water. It is nothing but the equilibrium constant of the dissociation of water molecule. Now, this concept which Arrhenius told in aqueous medium, it was then extended by Franklin in 1905. He extended this theory in another solvent which is liquid ammonia. We know that in liquid ammonia many reactions is carried out and he said that just like water molecules ammonia also can give ammonium ion and amide ion. So, this is the cationic part and this is the anionic part and he said he said very similar it is very similar to the Arrhenius concept. He said that something in liquid ammonia which gives ammonium ion is an acid and which gives amide ion is a base, but rem remember that this is this is extended in liquid ammonia and he could explain many things. Say for example, HCl we know that acts as an acid in water and ammonium chloride acts as an acid very similar way in liquid ammonia. So, HCl gives H plus ion in, in water medium that is why it is an acid in water and ammonium chloride in liquid ammonia gives NH 4 plus. So, it is an acid. So, it is very similar and if we extend this thing in, in terms of the, the acid base reaction, we know the, that in aqueous condition we know that HCl and NaOH we all know that it gives salt and water. Similarly, ammonium chloride and sodium, sodium, amide, sodium amide. So, it gives NaCl and NHC. So, these types of these types of reaction could be explained by Franklin very nicely. Also, uh, we know that ammonia as we have seen that ammonia is a protonic solvent, but there are some solvents we know that it is non protonic. Say for example, liquid sulfur dioxide liquid sulfur in liquid sulfur dioxide we do not have any proton. So, what will happen to this? It is also explained by Franklin. So, something which gives the cationic part of sulfur dioxide that is thionyl, uh, thionyl group that will be an acid and something which will, which will give in liquid sulfur dioxide the sulphide ion that is nothing but SO3 minus 2 that will be called as a base. The limitations of this theory, the Franklin theory is that the acid base phenomena in solvent system only it has, it has been explained here just similar to Arrhenius concept. So, it is 
placing undue stress upon the ionization of solvent and also it excludes the non ionizing solvent and in absence of any solvent say for example, in gaseous phase it could not explain those the properties of acids and bases. The theory defines acids and bases in terms of their solutions and not in terms of the properties of the substance themselves and it places undue stress upon the ionic character of neutralization also. So, every, every theory has some limitations, but that time it was it was it could explain the properties of acids and bases very nicely in some other solvents, uh, but not in water. Now, comes the Lori Bronsted theory and it has been uh, stated in 1923 that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a substance that is capable of combining with a proton. That means, here it is not told that um, that base is a substance which can give OH minus. Instead, it, it said that base is something which can take up the proton. So, here it is shown you can see that acid if I denote it as A and base I can say it is B. Then acid gives H plus, then H plus will be taken up by the base to form some type of acid. So, this is a very, this is more general and this is, this could can explain many things beyond this Arrhenius and Franklin concept. Say for example, by this Bronsted theory, we can explain several molecules. Say for example, if it is a neutral molecule HCl, then we can explain why it is an acid. It, if it is a cation say for example, ammonium ion or hydronium ion or even some aqua complexes of aluminum, then also we can explain that why it is a, why it is a, it is an acid or even some anions like bisulfate or bicarbonate that also can be explained. Why? Because you know this bisulf bisulfate can give proton, bicarbonate can give proton, so it is an acid. Ammonium ion can give proton, hydronium ion can give proton, so it is an acid. Now, similarly in case of base, say for example, neutral molecule NH3, it can take up a proton to form ammonium ion, so it is a base and anion say for example, OH minus it can take up a proton to form the water molecule, so it is a base. Even a cation say for example, this type of complexes which can take up a proton to, to give back this one you can see here. So, this is also can this property also can be explained by this Bronsted lorry theory. It has been shown here uh, very in, uh, in equation form that why something is acid, why something is a base. Now, from this we can easily understand that every acid therefore, has its conjugate base. When an acid gives up a proton, then it forms another compound which is nothing but its conjugate base. So, it is formed by the loss of a proton and every base has its conjugate acid formed by the acceptance of a proton. So, it is also called conjugate acid base theory. Now, this, this theory is very nice uh, in, in terms of that it can explain many, many molecules or ions why it is an acid or it is a base. So, here you can see since a Br proton cannot exist, exist in solution, so no acid base reaction can take place unless there is a base. So, why? Because some acid will give up some proton, but there must be some taker of that proton. So, it is nothing a base. So, because proton cannot, cannot exist in solution, it must be combined with something to, to form something. So, who will take up this thing? A base will take up this thing. So, here it is shown that acid 1 gives a base 1. So, acid 1 gives proton to form its conjugate base and the base another base should be there 
which can take up a proton to form acid. So, acid 1 if we add these two equations then we will see acid 1 plus base 2 gives acid 2 plus base 1. Thus, an acid reacts with a base to form a new acid and a new base that is an acid base reaction involves two conjugate pairs of acids and bases. Here the example you see acetic acid which is acid 1 then the ammonia molecule which is base 2 can, can produce ammonium ion. So, this acetic acid gives the proton which is taken up by the ammonia to form the ammonium ion and then this one is converted to base which is nothing but the acetate ion. Okay. So, acid 1 and base 1 and base 2 and acid 2 these are the two pairs. So, in this way we can explain all reactions and we also know that water is amphoteric. So, water can act both as an acid and a base when it acts an, as an acid its conjugate base is O H minus ion when it acts as a base its conjugate acid is hydronium ion. This is very simple. Now, here it is shown water functions as an acid here. So, it will give a proton and ammonia will be a base. So, it takes up ammonium ion. So, from water O H minus ion is produced and from ammonia ammonium ion is produced. Water can function as a base in this reaction you can see that because HCl is stronger acid than water that is why. So, everything is relative you know you have to think who is better acid which is better base then only you can decide that who will act as an acid and which will act as a base. There is a profound effect which, which tells us that solvent has enormous effect to decide which will be an acid and which will be a base that means, the acid base behavior of a solute. The, the very good example of this one it, this is the perchloric acid in the perchloric acid liquid perchloric acid if you put HF hydrofluoric acid then who will be the acid and who will be the base that will be decided by the who is better who is stronger acid. Okay. Here you can tell in this reaction the perchloric acid will be acting as the acid and hydrofluoric acid will be acting as a base. But in this case where perchloric acid is not there, but nitric acid is there it will be opposite that means, nitric acid will be a base and hydrofluoric acid will be an acid. And similar way neutralization according to Brown's rate concept is simply a transfer of a proton from an acid to a base okay, which has been explained already. Now, all anions are evidently bases and since they can add protons anions can add protons. So, they must be a base the strength of a base is a measure of its capacity to capture protons in competition of other bases as for example, in water solution which minus ion is a stronger base acetate ion is fairly strong while the nitrate and chloride are very weak bases. In real, real sense also in real field also we know that OH is a very strong base acetate ion though it is basic, but it is not that strong as OH minus and nitrate and chloride are very weak bases. Now, Bronsted theory defines acids and bases in terms of the substance themselves and not in terms of their ionization in solution this is the positive point of Bronsted theory. And though admittedly superior to the theory of solvent systems, but still it has some limitation every theory has some limitation we all know that what is the limitation though most common acids are protonic in nature, but many are not say for example, aluminum chloride we know that it is acidic, but how it can be explained in terms of Brown state theory it is not possible and uh, stannic chloride it is also acidic. So, how it can be explained by Brown state theory. So, these are the limitations for Brown state theory. 
Now, comes the Lewis theory. Lewis theory uh, also uh, given in 1923, where G and Lewis proposed a new definitions of acids and bases. This is very simple and according to this theory, uh, it is told that the base is something which uh, can donate an electron pair and acid is something which is capable of accepting an electron. So, it is based on electron something which accepts electron it is an acid which can give, give electron that is called a base. So, considering this theory the bond formation uh, uh, in the bond formation you know Lewis base is a substance that contains a pair of electrons. If it does not contain an electron pair then how it can give a give an electron pair and the base is something something which contains a uh, the base can have a pair of electrons which can be donated and acid is something which can take up that electron pair to form a bond. And neutralization is nothing but the formation of the coordinate bond. So, electron pair is given and somebody is taking that electron pair that is nothing but the coordinate bond and between the Lewis acid and Lewis base. It is the formation of a bond coordinate bond between Lewis base and Lewis acid. So, here you can see that ammonia can can uh, co combine with H plus proton to form ammonium ion. So, this is nothing but the coordinate bond formation. Similar way copper 2 plus copper ion can combine can form a complex with ammonia molecules to form Q prime in complex C U N H T whole 4 2 plus this is also some type of bond formation and this is this can be explained very nicely by the Lewis theory. Now, this is the last one this is the most uh, general, but this can explain uh, may be everything which is nothing but Ushanovich theory. According to this theory an acid is a substance which can give up cations can com combine with an anion and even with an electron or it can neutralize a base to give a salt. On the other hand a base is a substance which can give up anions or electrons can combine with cations or it can neutralize an acid to produce a salt. This theory includes all previous acid base definitions, but it is too general it is too general. Thus in the uh, in the first lecture we have seen we have discussed that to define an acid or a base several theories have been considered some has some advantage some and some limitations, but um, but each one is good and each theory is correct as far as it goes. However, no single concept may be found adequate under all circumstances each concept has its own values and limitations and you have to decide which one you will use to explain the things to acidity acidic property or basic property, but you have to remember the solvent who, what solvent you are using to explain your things. Thank you, thank you.